What happens when you take a mom from the valley and put her on a cannabis cooking show with high-profile celebrity guests? Listen to find out. What's happening today? What are you thinking about? When you're walking down the street, is your head in a cloud? Don't you want to know what's going on? Let's go! Checking in with Mary Lynn. Checking in with Mary Lynn. Checking in with Mary Lynn. Let's check in with Mary Lynn. Hey everybody, let's podcast. I am truly a freelance artist. Primarily, I've done acting, but I've done all sorts of things. I did the hundred thousand dollar pyramid recently i don't know when that's airing that was exciting that was something that came up randomly i got offered another show recently you know you never know what's going to come up i didn't even know something like this would exist i guess i wasn't shocked i just thought huh that's getting made and i asked to be on it this is fantastic I was offered a job to be on a panel for one show. I believe there's six episodes on a cooking show, but not just any cooking show. A cooking show where gourmet chefs feed a panel of friends, acquaintances in this case, who are eating gourmet food that's been infused with cannabis. And let me just describe to you what the show is. I'll read right off the sheet that I got sent. In each episode, three highly decorated cannabis chefs will create an innovative cannabis-infused meal based on culinary theme, high-end comfort food. Ours was grilling from a panel of judges and celebrity guests. I'm the celebrity guest, you guys, while competing for a cash prize. Through microdosing and high-end culinary techniques, our competing cannabis chefs will say goodbye to the era of pop brownies and welcome in the new normal of fine cannabis dining. Um, it's time to show the world that cannabis can be responsibly consumed solely through amazing food. Now, I'm entrusting you guys with this information because I just realized they, I won't say what network it is. They like to keep it under wraps. That was my general description, but I am going to talk about who I was on the panel with. That's the whole point of my podcast. This is the most exciting part. And the fact that um, I've just agreed to eat food with cannabis in it, and I don't really do that in my everyday life. I don't have anything against it, but I, on the whole, do not smoke pot. I do not ingest cannabis in any way, shape, or form. The few times I've tried it, isolated times, it's never really worked out for me. One time when I was very young and I was in Detroit and I was at my friend's house, she was really into smoking pot and I took like maybe a hit or two and then I drove home and I remember it was pouring rain and I just, the rain was coming down in sheets And it was dark and I was on the freeway and I just remember getting really involved in the movement of the sheets of rain, you know, depending on which way the wind was blowing as it went in front of my, on my windshield. And it was one of those rains where I was, the windshield wipers were going really fast and I, I guess I could have pulled over, but in that moment I just thought like focus, but I couldn't tell because it was raining so hard, I was, wasn't was sure where the lines in the road were, were, and I was really confused by the pattern and the motion of the rain on the windshield. So that was pretty dangerous, guys. There's a vote for not driving um, after you've smoked pot. Um, and that was a long time ago. I mean, I see people do it, and when I'm in L.A. traffic, you can occasionally, you will just see somebody either their whole car filling up with smoke or them blowing smoke out the window. And I assume that that's pot 97% of the time. I guess it could just be vaping, which is what? Tobacco? Flavored tobacco? Um, (laughs) Vaping. Um, I, yeah, I've tried it 
isolated times over the years. Once when I was an adult, for some reason, I can't believe I'm mentioning this person in my podcast, but the only person I remember being with, excuse me, hold on, being with me in, okay, so I was in my 20s. I had just moved to LA and uh, there were tons of house parties. I just reminisced with some old friends of mine. I did their podcast recently and uh, we were totally name dropping during the podcast, all these names that didn't people didn't know what we knew. And I was like, we went to parties several times a week. There was always a house party, <clears throat> either people we knew or oftentimes it was just showing up at a party. And those were the days. Those was before the internet <clears throat> when we were using the Thomas Guide, the paper map to get through the Hollywood Hills. Anyway, I was at um, a party and Andy Dick is the only person I can remember. First, there must have been, there was other people that I did. I didn't come there with Andy Dick, but I knew he was friends with the people I was friends with. And somehow I ended up in a car with him. I don't remember. There were way too many people piled into a Volkswagen bug. That tells you how long this was. I mean, you don't even see these on the road anymore. This was a time where you would see them on the road. I would say one out of every 10 cars was a Volkswagen bug. Yeah, think about it. Now when you see it, it's like a specialty old timey car. But it was outside the party. Was it still like pot? Was that taboo? Oh, people just were out in the car smoking pot. And I, again, took... I believe I took like one hit and then I started to panic and I said, roll, roll down the window, roll down the window. And then I crawled out the window because there were people like sitting on each other's laps. There was like five or six people in this Volkswagen bug and I just neat crawled out and um, waited for them to go back in the party. And then I remember standing with Andy Dick of all people who knows why? And that was, I can think that was maybe the first experience after that one in college. And uh, I just got really paranoid and really quiet and really concerned that someone was standing behind me or I was really aware of like white noise. Um, and I just thought, you know, I have enough social anxiety. This is supposed to be fun. And this is really not fun. And I was waiting for it to end. Oh, there was one time before college, I just had a uh, hidden memory of being in high school. And my high school boyfriend liked it too. And I remember, again, I did one hit. I, I, I gave this a good chance over the years. And I remember the Red Hot Chili Peppers were on MTV. And his parents weren't home. And I was sitting in his parents' kitchen and I just, and he was like kind of laughing at me like, oh, like relax or have a good time. And I just sat on the bar stool in the kitchen, staring at the microwave clock. And I just kept saying to him, when's it going to be over? 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 Um, so yeah, times are different now. And you know, my thing now is like, I don't really need it. It hasn't really done anything for me, but I have been sort of curious because it's, it's so, um, such a specialty thing now and legalized and you can get the, it's really broken down like what the effects of it is i mean even recently like i've been traveling and there's like cbd oil in everything everywhere every new city it's like cbd oil latte uh and even my parents were like oh yeah we love it we we use it on our joints cbd oil i use it for my back um so it's just a thing now right so anyway i get this over for the show i I uh, turn up at the place where they're taping. They send me a car. Really nice already. Everybody is really chill. <laughs> Go figure, am I right? Um, really nice. Um, kind of a comfortable, cozy, nondescript little production office. There's a couch and there's snacks and drinks and, and you know, we're being taken care of. And um, there was this woman next to me who looked totally casual and was totally cool who I later once she get got her makeup did and put on her amazing sort of tie-dye ish rainbow it wasn't tie-dye but it's one color blended into the other rainbow jacket blazer fitted blazer and I had her hair pulled back and her lipstick on and all that um it was L King and I was like oh L King she's a singer and then halfway through the show I was like oh you're L King 
she sings that song X's and O's and lots of other music, which I'm now catching up on. But I was like, forgive me. I just um, put together who you are. Um, but so anyway, she was really nice and cool. Like before even, I love that when someone's like a superstar and then they're just right off the bat, like humble and cool and a real person, um, you know, while we were waiting. And then, so we get on the, um, oh, and then the other person on the panel is Joe Coy, who I knew him. I knew his comedy. I've met him briefly through other people. And when I saw him in the waiting area, I kind of did one of those like, hi, uh, I, I know you from comedy. And he looked at me like, no, like he was staring at me, not blank, but like, uh, like he wasn't acknowledging the comedy thing, but he was looking at me and he's like, okay. And like, cool, cool. And like gave me a hug. And then it wasn't until in the middle of the show, actually it was after the show. He was like, oh, that's where I knew you from. It was 24. That's why I didn't, I was looking at you like that because I knew, I knew you from somewhere. But anyway, um, so met him in the waiting room you know, had the awkward hello and also met Ricky Lake, who was also on the panel. And she right away was great. And we bonded in the, we, you know, had our little makeup and hair touch up for the show. And we bonded in there and we were just immediately laughing. And she said she loved me on the Larry Sanders show. And that was, that's always nice to hear, you know, cause I loved me on that show too. Uh, I miss it. It was a really uh, cool character and a really good time for me because I was very green in Hollywood. So, you know, we're kind of bonding about um, our personal lives and I didn't realize how many years her talk show was on the air and the fact that she's been doing all these documentaries, just sitting across from her, again, just a cool, humble, unique, smart, like fun-loving, badass, successful person and um, she was great. Oh, and she was saying that she is a regular cannabis user, like sort of recently she does like a little bit of edibles and that she really likes it. Um, but then she started acting like she was nervous to go on the panel. And I was like, why am I not nervous? I'm the one that doesn't do it at all. So we get on the panel. We right away are having the greatest time. They gave us this goofy name, like we're called the best buds. And we just really liked each other and enjoyed each other. And we're, we were kind of laughing together before we even started with the food. So then, and the set is beautiful and the theme is grilling. The one thing I will say, when we walked onto the set, they didn't have like necessarily the proper ventilation for grilling or I don't know what happened, but there was a shit ton of smoke. And um, our judges were there that they set sat separate than us two judges and then there were three gourmet chefs and they were just cooking away and it was really exciting because it's a really pretty set with a really great lighting and I'm like oh my gosh I'm on a cooking show but at the same time then the cameras would roll and you weren't sure when you were just like being candid or what they were capturing and they just wanted to you know have like natural dialogue and of course we're all going around and saying what our experience is and Joe Coy has done he did it. He acted like he didn't do it, but he had done it recently. So he wasn't, he's totally, he's not a regular user, but he's not inexperienced. And then L was like, yeah, I've totally like smoked today or whatever. And then same thing with Ricky, but Ricky was weirdly, she was more nervous than I thought going into it. Um, but she was like the sweetest because she, you know, at one point she was like, I'll be your buddy if something happens, which is like the sweetest, like you would say if you were in high school, but like we're fully grown adults. And I was just like, I so appreciate that, that you're, that you weren't, that you would do that for me. And you're not afraid to say that. And that's how everybody was equally in their own different ways. Like Joe Coy, I thought I knew his work, but I didn't realize what a massive, massive, like I don't follow him that closely, but I've known of him for a long time. And his most recent show is the biggest, most amazing. Like, he's one of the top selling. He does stadium shows, like Kevin Hart. And he was a totally, like, cool guy, you know? Like, everyone was down to earth and talented and super successful and just having a good time. And I was like, this is really good company to be in. I like this. This is what I want to be around. And I liked how each person on the panel was the, had their own unique 
thing that they were pursuing and they were just themselves, you know, like Ricky Lake, you could tell she was like a talk show producer. She knew a lot of, uh, she actually did a documentary about cannabis, which I have to check out. So there were some times where she would just like drop some knowledge and Joe Coy was like laughing. He's like, yeah, you're, you're smart. I see why you did that. And then L at one point we were singing her song or Joe did a post on IG where he played like her hit song and, oh, and then no Ricky was like oh this is your song and she's like I'm sorry I don't know the words and Elle's like I know the words but and she was doing that thing of like not like Madonna where she's like I demand you listen to my music but like in a really fun loving way like yeah that's my song like put it on and I just love that attitude so anyway we get our first courses and first of all the it was there was like this butternut squash or swa- squash ceviche um there was this fig with not gouda cheese oh my god we'll be here all night if i try to like a like a baked fig with cheese some kind of fancy cheese thing and like a, a broccoli salad so it was like that we had three courses and the next course was like a bunch of grilled you know one course was pork chops one uh, um, course was this insane burger which i don't really eat burgers but it was like kind of like loose like a throne I don't know how to say it there was really thin grilled onions on there and the sauce was it was the most delicious I don't even really eat like that but it was so crazy good and then there was like a salmon with this black rice and this uh, polenta underneath the pork chops and you know things are taking kind of a long time we have little breaks in between because they're preparing the the courses and at the beginning we're kind of like loud and buzzy and I didn't really notice the cannabis at all. I was like, I love it. I don't taste it at all. And we're all just like laughing. And then there was this moment and I never corrected it with L. It was like a totally small moment, but like her last name is Snyder because um, her dad is Rob Snyder. I looked it up on the internet afterwards where she re- reconciled with him and they were like, she was like, yeah, my name's I don't know how to explain it. Now I'm realizing it was a total stoner moment because I was like, oh, K- King is a totally different than Snyder. Like, that's so, so funny that you would say your last name is Schneider. But they were really, never mind. I can't even explain it now. It was so dumb. And that it was in that moment I was like, okay, I guess I'm, it was the way that they were microdosing was like you didn't realize it was happening. And it was, and I was really fun loving and really talkative. And then the food was crazy delicious. And I was like, this is great. There's just one to five milligrams per whatever. And by the time we get to the the dessert, I guess they amped up the dessert because you're like rounding it out and they want you to like culminate or whatever. So by the time we get to the end of the meal, I am, I, they, the judges come over and sit with us and they're doing like their final synopsis. We didn't have to, we weren't the ones that cut any of the chefs. They did that, but we were just supposed to give our two cents and then that we go away and the judges do like the final cut and someone gets the prize for making the most delicious cannabis food, which uh, by the way, when I signed up for it, I was like, whatever, what's, what is even the point of this? And then by the first course, I was like, <laughs> I want all my food like this. This is amazing. And then by the end, by the dessert, I remember Elle next to me, they asked her, like, what did you like about this? Or what did you not like about it? And I was looking at her like, oh, early on after the first course, when I said I didn't really notice it, I did take a step and I, the floor wasn't exactly where I thought it was. And I looked at the judges and I was looking at their faces and thinking, they're so beautiful. Just like the colors and everything so nice and I looked around and I was like everyone's beautiful and I could feel these like little waves of like giggly and okay so then back to towards the dessert and Elle was talking about like describing a meal and being really um um like critiquing it but being really descriptive and articulate that's the word I was looking for and I remember looking at her and going I don't how does she have anything to say about this right now like I don't I don't even have any words to say. How is she even finding stuff to say right now? And then I realized for like the last whole course, like towards the end after the hamburger and stuff, and then leading into the dessert, man, I ate the dessert, so it just got worse from there. But I was that point of the cannabis trip, which it caught up to me where I was just like stoned and not talking. Like I was really introspective and I didn't want to talk. And I 
remember seeing myself, but I honestly, it's almost like when you're PMSing and you're like really emotional and, but you, those emotions are real, but they're affected by the state that you're in. So that's what I was going. Yeah, I just, I don't want to talk to anybody right now. So that was very real for me, but I also knew that it was an effect, but I didn't care because I was like, yeah, this is what's going on with me. Like, I don't even know why I'm here right now. Like I totally went back to the old stone days, but it wasn't that bad because they did, you know, it wasn't that great. So I went, I started in it going, this is my new thing, man, cannabis food. And then by the end I was like, I I like the, the happy talky part of it. I don't like the, the end, which apparently I could probably, um, not apparently, I know I can probably experiment and get the desired effect maybe and not have that happen. But the producer came up and, you know, they were talking to us in, be, in between before it was over, like there was a break and they were resetting something. And I, and I looked at her and I said, yeah, I can't, I kind of, she's like, how you doing? Like, what did you think of that meal? That's what it was. Cause sometimes they'll prompt you. Um, a few times they, they would have us say to each other, like, are you, can you taste the cannabis, you know, to just get like certain conversations going. And she asked me what I thought of it. And I was like, I, I just realized I stopped talking and I kind of started laughing and she goes, she was smiling. She's like, yeah, yeah, we noticed. And she's like, don't worry. The show is only a half hour long and we'd been there like four or five hours. So that made me feel better. But she said, we, you know, we're going to cut around that. So if, if you watch it later, when I tell you what network it's on, um, you, it's executive produced by Snoop Dogg's company. He was not there. I wish. Could you imagine? But, um, yeah, I kind of blew it at the end and just probably was just sitting there staring off into space. Um, I think everybody else was like full too, but they all could talk and had their wits about them. And I, uh, I didn't do so well. And, um, you know, I'll keep you posted on how my cannabis, it, it, it was a very fun show though. It had, and I love the other people. Like I said, they were, it was so inspiring to be around people who, you could tell each in their own way had been through trials and tribulations to get to where they are, but were really enjoying life and not taking it for granted. And like I said, each person on that panel was that in their own way. And what a great experience that I got to have and meeting everybody and, um, getting that inspiration. Um, so that was cool. What did I want to say about, yeah, I was staring off into space. The show was over. It was great. Would I do it again? Yes. I would do that once a week if that were my job. Although it, you know, I was kind of like tired and groggy the whole next day. I got to be honest. And I went to pick up my son at a pool party. And that was really interesting because I definitely was feeling, it's weird because I didn't really feel like I was not being myself, you know, because of the way they dosed it or whatever this will be a really interesting podcast because I'm sure there's like tons of people out there that have like a weed habit or have done it a lot more and are just laughing at me right now but um that's my experience what can I say guys it was um super fun on all levels but I don't know if that's my go-to thing like there was a point when I turned to Ricky and I was like this is like uh, this is what I'm doing now like drinking is bullshit this is like a really cool and she's like I know But I don't know, maybe I'll look into like what her thing is. Because I think also I have to take into account that I ate an entire meal and there were milligrams of it in every part of it. Um, So yeah, I'm a little bit behind on understanding how pot works. Uh, A little bit late to the game, starting it up late in life. Um, But I'm happy I had that experience and uh, I love being able to share it with you. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.